All right, Ryan Gill here with Hunt Primitive, where we entertain, educate, and inspire. And on this channel, we do a lot of primitive build and or hunting videos just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. But after getting a ton of requests to show people how I build my hunting atlatl, here we are. Okay, you'll notice in this video I'm going to be using Stone Age tools to put together this atlatl, and the reason is is because not only do I want to show the plausibility of actually building this with Stone Age technology, which is truly not a problem at all, uh, but if you find yourself not wanting to build with Stone Age tools, which you probably will not, that is perfectly fine. Just implement modern tools in place of the Stone Age tools and you'll be off and running. Uh, so let's get into this, not only the build, but also why I build this atlatl the way that I do. And the number one goal to me is hunting with equipment that is at least very similar to how prehistoric man did. Meaning I don't want to use modern components in my hunting, my atlatl set. I don't like metal points and any of that. If I'm going to do this, if you're going to be a bear, you'll be a grizzly, you're going to go all the way and we're going to do it just the way that they did. And through the atlatl learning curve, in the time that I've been doing this, I've always wanted to build the best atlatl possible. I'm not trying to recreate an artifact that's been discovered. I am building the best atlatl that I can make that I know will perform the way that I want it to. So you may find that you want to alter the design a little bit to better suit you. It's not the only way to build one, that's for sure. But this is 100% what works for me and I have taken big game animals with it. So let's get on and see if we can't get it together. So anyway, you'll notice that I have been straightening this cane shaft with uh, just a fire in the backyard. It's not a big deal. You can use any heat source that you want and I am using river cane. The reason I'm using river cane is number one it stays straight and stays rigid and you can typically find it uh, in great abundance you know if you are around that area and it's very repeatable so if I go out and cut wood shafts that's perfectly fine there's nothing wrong with that at all I have river cane I love river cane and I build these for a living and I always want to be able to show people what I build and what I use as a reflection also of the things that I sell. So if you are in fact looking to purchase an atlatl, you can check out my site which is huntprimitive.com and you can buy starter atlatls and fully functioning hunting atlatls just like the one we're building today. Okay, so with the river cane covered, what I'm looking for when I'm choosing river cane is the biggest, heaviest, thickest pieces that I can get my hands on. And the reason for that is I want the most penetration possible. The idea to me is not to penetrate just enough. I want to be able to drive a stone point through a deer or a pig or whatever I'm hunting. And the reason is, number one, I've never lost an animal due to over penetration, but I have for under penetration. But the end game to me is not to simply just kill a pig. It's to engineer an atlatl that I would comfortably be able to say, yes, they killed megafauna with. And that's a taller order than most people are willing to accept. Your standard atlatls that folks put together to go out and play in the yard are simply not up to that task of mostly even hunting big game let alone megafauna. So what I'm looking for again are the biggest river cane pieces that I can get a hold of. Now of course bamboo gets much bigger, you can get some giant bamboo, but anyway I would say the base of these shafts that I'm looking at are oftentimes in the I don't know probably seven eighths inch wide range. I mean they're, they're pretty thick that's for sure. Uh, and then on that side, we are also going to be affixing a cane foreshaft. And the idea with the foreshaft is to give us better penetration for one, and then also create 
uh, a replaceable tip. So we can actually practice with these same spears that we are going to be hunting with. All we do is remove a practice foreshaft and put in a hunting foreshaft. And then should the foreshaft break, we can pull that one out and we can replace it with a new one. And the reason that I use cane for the foreshaft instead of hardwood, at least in this situation, is cane is exceptionally tough and it stays very straight. The same reasons that we're using it for the shaft itself. And the four shafts, I like to have, you know, 14 to 16 inches or so of exposed four shaft. And do I need that much? Probably not. But again, if I hit an animal at say like a funny angle, I want to make sure I can get as much penetration as possible. And even if I get a hard quartering away shot, it should be enough to still exit out the other top, uh, other side, making two holes. The thick transition you'll notice in the video from the main shaft to the fore shaft is specifically left abrupt or very slightly tapered. In one of the first ones that I built, in the first video that I killed uh, the hog with, which you can look down in the show notes and you can get a link and go watch that when you're done with this. I tapered the main shaft slightly down into the fore shaft and I actually over penetrated up onto the main shaft and the pig ran away and broke my main shaft, which is fine. It did the job that it needed to do and it penetrated exceptionally well. But the goal in this to me is I actually wanted to be able to build something that's very repeatable in the in the primitive fashion that the folks that build this stuff a long time ago, they wanted to preserve as much of it as possible because they had to reuse it. It wasn't like, oh, cool, we broke that one. Let's go home and make a new one. You know, it was worth it. And it's like, yes, it was worth it. But at the end of the day, if they could keep their main shaft and just replace four shafts, then that's a better deal all the way around. So that's a lot less work having to build a new spear every single time. So uh, because the first situation had broke my main shaft, I decided to go more abrupt the next time around. So specifically as this penetrates, it hits that abrupt transition, which is something that we talk about all the time that you don't want on an arrow, uh, but we now do want it on the ad ladder. And that should in fact stop our penetration so the fore shaft breaks the animal runs off perhaps drops the spear somewhere along the way uh, but in any event hopefully we can use the main shaft again just by removing and replacing the broken fore shaft so then fletching with turkey feathers it's not really a uh, a crazy science it's not as quite as important as you will find with an arrow, but the fletchings definitely do help stabilize. And if you want to get rid of some of the floppy edges, so it's a little bit quieter when you throw it, you can either take some scissors and cut them, or you can simply take a burning ember and kind of burn all those floppy little curled edges right off of it. So now the length and weight of the spear that I'm using. Like I said, I want the biggest ones that I can get, and that is a couple reasons. Number one, the longest spears are actually easier to throw. They're easier to be accurate with, much like shooting um, a gun with a longer barrel. It is easier to be accurate with them. Plus, I also just find them more stable in general. Now, you do get to a point where you get so long that the length will override the spine. I mean, sort of like an arrow spine as it paradoxes when you shoot it. And atlatl spear does the same thing. And you can really overpower the spear and then get to a point where it starts flopping wildly out of control, which we don't want. We want it to have a little bit of flex and a nice paradox for just, you know, a few, a few yards and then straighten out really fast because we want all the energy to be focused on the target not lost in paradox. Okay, so the, the length that I'm typically shooting for is about nine feet long, and that's including the fore shaft. And that's a pretty long spear, but it packs the weight that we're looking for, 
and it also packs the stability that we're shooting for. And weight ranges, I'm typically looking for hunting, you know, say pig-sized animals. I am really trying to shoot for that 3,000 to 3,500 grains. And the thrower that I'm using is a 30-inch thrower and unnecessary at all to use a banner weight on that. Uh, I build the thrower to match my spear. So I build my spears first and then I build a thrower that will balance that without a banner stone. Uh, future episodes, we I almost guarantee you we'll touch on banner stones, but in this set for hunting normal, medium to large game, not megafauna, we don't need a banner stone. It's another piece of the of the equation that can simply just move and go wrong and change the tuning of our set. So I prefer, again, to build a thrower that does not need a banner weight at all. Now, should you be uh, deciding to use hardwood for your spear because you don't have cane, there's positively nothing wrong with that. The idea then being you're not you're probably not going to be looking at a nine foot spear. You're probably going to be looking for something more along the lines of seven, maybe seven to eight feet. And again, perhaps looking for that same 3,000 grains plus, and then your thrower again is going to be matched to properly balance uh, the spear while in the loaded position. And we don't want it completely center of balance. I like to have a little bit of nose heavy. Not a lot, but just a little bit. So another point to bring up is people have mentioned before, oh, well, you know, you should make that, and, and really they just don't, they don't understand what I have done and why I have done it. So if you look at, at any of the hunts that I do, uh, and you, again, you don't, they feel like it penetrated far enough, it's because I specifically wanted it to stop. I didn't want the, the spear to go way up in through it or over. And at somebody at one point, more than one person has says, oh, I bet it would, it would probably penetrate a lot better you know, if you use the heavier spear. And again, I don't want it to over penetrate. And number two, I physically cannot get a heavier spear in the materials that I'm using. Can I get a heavier spear using wood? Yes, I imagine I could. At this point in time, it's unnecessary. And the cane is, is way plenty heavy enough. And if I didn't have that abrupt transition, then surely I would penetrate well into the main shaft. I simply do not want to. But also, I would like to make mention, when you think about 3,000 to 3,500 grains in throwing that, you don't realize it until you throw it, but that is a very heavy spear. So while my dart does not look big and heavy, when you throw that compared to, say, a six-foot spear there is a noticeable difference. In fact, past 10 yards, it loses elevation extremely fast. To throw one of those 20 yards is a quite a feat, quite honestly. Now, you could cock back and aim up in the air and, and obviously throw, but if you're lining up at a target even at 15 yards, you're going to notice that you hit down in front of the target in the dirt more times than not, unless you specifically are aiming higher. So it's really, I want the biggest, heaviest spear that I can make within reason. My hunting distances are typically 10 yards and in. Okay, so I don't care about throwing 15 yards. My sole purpose in primitive hunting is to get close. And... Obviously, if I was hunting a very large animal, then I could reasonably step back further and just aim higher on the animal and probably drop the spear in where I need it, and that's perfectly fine, and we may even need to go a little bit heavier if possible. But as of right now, these are literally as heavy as you can reasonably even throw. So you put one together, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. It's a completely different animal than the lighter spear. So like if you go on my website and you buy a starter set, you know, that's got six foot cane spears, you know, and a shorter, 
you know, 16 to 20 inch thrower, and then you throw that set compared to one of these archaic hunting sets, it is a completely different animal. And you will notice the impact immediately when you throw it is substantial more. And that's why this is made for hunting and the other set is made for more playing around. And you can hunt small game with it. I honestly am not comfortable. I would not take one of my starter sets out with a stone point and hunt big game. I would not do it. it the penetration qualities are just not where I want them to be. But they are exceptionally uh, efficient in these big sets. So you'll have noticed throughout this video, you can hear me talk about the theory, and that's the idea behind this. Again, is you can watch what I'm building. You should be able to build this atletal by nothing more than watching me do it. But of course, you know, I wanted to give you the weight and length specifics and the reasons why for that. And then, of course, voice overing through this build is the best way to convey that message at the same time as learning how to build this. But some of the other things that I'm using in here that I will just make mention, um, pine pitch is the glue that holds the spear point on to the foreshaft, and there is no glue that goes from the foreshaft to the main shaft. Again, because we want to be able to remove the foreshaft if it's broken, damaged, or dull. And the important thing to remember is you don't want a completely friction fit foreshaft. You want a little bit of friction and you want it to seat all the way at the bottom of that node. So when I cut my cane, I always cut the last node section off and then I have a hollow chamber, you know, about five or six inches long and that is what my foreshaft sets into. And it stops at the node behind that. That's the floor, essentially, of our chamber. And once we secure the front of the main shaft with sinew, it won't split. And I've only once been able to break the foreshaft through that node that's the floor. And that was by hitting a tree square on. I don't see that being a problem on an animal. It should not be a problem whatsoever. However, one thing that I oftentimes do now that's not shown in the video that's a nice little trick is if you are not comfortable just using that node as the floor that's holding your foreshaft, once your foreshaft is fit, cut about three-eighths or a half of an inch off the back of your foreshaft put a little bit of glue on it and ram it all the way at the bottom because now you're going to have a little bit thicker section that's glued in that's also going to help support the rear of your foreshaft from puncturing through. But again, I don't think that's a problem. That should not be a problem. I've not experienced that to be a problem. Uh, and uh, of course, when we mount our stone point, we want to do it just like we do with an arrow and we want a very smooth transition. Make sure you do watch that, that portion uh, very well because you do not want any abrupt edges that are going to slow down penetration on this. It is very heavy and they do penetrate really well, but there is the possibility that you know you could make the transition so thick and abrupt that it slows down your penetration, which you do not want. So once you get your point mounted into place, go ahead and work that transition down and then wrap it very well with sinew, even more so than you would with an arrow because they have this atletal set that's this large and heavy has more energy than an arrow. I can promise you that when you shoot an arrow and it goes fast and looks like it's doing a lot, well, when you throw one of these big sets, you'll notice there is a lot of energy behind it. it. It can knock your target over where your arrow simply just goes in and sticks. So you need to have a little extra sinew on that to make sure that everything is shored up 
and it's not going to split that shaft on you because if it does split that shaft you're losing energy that you could have put towards penetration so just kind of keep that in mind as well and then as far as throwability on these really you want again to build the stiffest and heaviest ones possible basically the stiffer the shaft the stiffer the main shaft the harder that you can throw it even at as thick as these ones are I can't throw it as hard as I can because I overpower the dart but you also lose accuracy when you throw like that so the idea is for me to be able to take a preloaded stance like the video on um, how to throw the atlatl for hunting which I, I will link that down in the show notes as well and when I take that stance and throw I, I'm not looking for any extra momentum or throwing it as hard as possible it's more of a relaxed throw it's a forceful throw it's not it's not light and gentle for for targets it's to hunt it's to penetrate but it's not a big wild man type of throw so if we have to force it in there chances are we're going to overpower so what we're trying to do is we're using the weight of the spear to get our energy up to compensate for not being able to throw exceptionally hard so if you think back to shop class in high school and there's always the kid that's trying to force a saw through a piece of wood and the teacher always says let the saw do the work let the atlatl do the work throw it accurately with as much force as you can without overpowering the spear and without losing your accuracy and let the weight of the spear do the work now I believe that I've covered everything that I needed to cover in regards to weight, length, and reason why. But if there's any other questions you have, do feel free to put them down in the comments and I will do my best to answer those. And thanks for tuning in and if you're still listening and, and enjoyed uh, the instruction today, then Please give the video a like and uh, let me know what you think about it and subscribe if you've not done that already. And we will catch you on the next adventure.